Welcome to the AFAR Wind Tunnel. Let's go inside. I'm Alan Shepard, and I'm visiting the Advanced Facility for Avian Research here at Western University. Today I'm meeting two of our researchers to get a tour of this amazing place and learn about their work involving migratory birds. Good morning. Hey. hey good morning. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, you? Alan. Welcome to AFAR. I mean, this entire structure is devoted to birds. All the captive research happens here, as well as a lot of genetic work and microscopy lab analysis. So yeah, this is like ground zero for bird research. Tell me a bit about the implications of the research. Many of us in the center are focusing on large-scale migratory patterns and lots of radio tracking that's been revolutionized by the miniaturization of electronics. Like we can put a 300 milligram radio tag on one of those yellow rump warblers and track it for months. So now we're building up a good picture of where these birds are going and what they are doing. And what we're gonna see as the climate changes is changes in the patterns of movement. The total abundance of birds in, in North America has dropped by about 30%. So that's about 3 billion birds fewer now than, than in 1970. 3 billion less? 3 billion it, fewer. Just in North birds. America. Yeah. Wow. This is the AFAR wind tunnel, the only one in the world where we can control the atmosphere that birds fly in. Let's go inside. It's specially designed so that we can get migratory flights that mimic what they do in nature. So they'll be flying in place here. Oh yeah. Everything's computer controlled. So we can select the wind speed we want, the temperature. We can choose a rate of climb for altitude. She's ready to go. Ready to fly. Just a matter of letting them go. We try to understand how the bird works inside so that we understand better how it responds to these changes in the environment. For instance, if it's doing a migratory flight, but the air temperature is now warmer than it used to be, or it's drier than it used to be due to climate change, that will affect its energy use and its water balance, and it might have to stop shorter than it would have. We can simulate those conditions, and we can predict how they'll respond to these environmental changes. So you both work uh, with and through this project, Animals on the Move. Right. Yeah. Could I give you a talk a little bit about what that program is and why it would matter? We formed the Center for Animals on the Move to try to bring together not just the bird people, but other people that are interested in movement ecology. From, from spiders to bees to birds to fish to coyotes. All the way up to satellite tracking of wildlife across the globe. So it, it's really about movement as a unifying concept. birds play such a critical role in the whole ecosystem of life, I assume. They have all sorts of ecosystem services. They control insects like mosquitoes, they pollinate plants. Yeah. We know the climate is changing and birds are really, really good sentinels of, of a changing climate and changing habitat. They don't just need good, nice, pristine habitat around here in their breeding grounds to survive. They also need places to stop and refuel during migration. And so everything has to be in place. And when their behavior shifts, it means something important is happening. And protecting birds means protecting the ecosystems we all depend on. And then let it go. Good job. Go. Oh, it went right for the trees. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny.